Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with cheesecake flan. That's right, I attempted to make a flan that tastes like cheesecake, but I actually ended up with a cheesecake that tastes like flan, which reminds me of something I used to tell my students way back in the day. Never name a dish until it's perfected. But having said that, we're going to stick with cheesecake flan for now, since you have to admit it is pretty good clickbait. But names aside, this really did come out incredibly well. And to get started, the first thing we're going to do is prep our ramekins, which is by far the most dangerous and difficult part. And to begin, we're going to grease the insides with just a few drops of vegetable oil, or melted butter if you want, or even a little bit of that nonstick spray, which I don't buy anymore because I heard it was bad for something. I don't remember what, but it was something. But anyway, we will rub the inside of each ramekin with a couple drops of oil, at which point we can move to the stove, where we're going to make what's called a dry caramel which we'll do by adding some sugar to a dry pan set over medium heat. And at first, not much is going to happen. But then, all of a sudden, you're going to see that sugar melting around the outside, around the outside, around the outside, at which point we're going to start to pay attention. Because as more of that sugar melts, and this comes up to temperature, it's going to start turning this beautiful amber color. And as that happens, what we'll do is occasionally want to give the pan a little shake or a little swirl, because we do not want to stir this with a utensil. And at no time during this process should your fingers come anywhere close to that stuff, because you will get an instant fourth degree burn. Okay, so no touching, no stirring. All we'll do is give that the occasional circular swirl like you see me doing here, until all the sugar disappears, and it looks a little something like this. And then once that happens, we will very quickly and confidently, but very, very carefully, pour that into the bottom of each ramekin, which if you do this fast enough, will spread out to coat the bottom, but if you're filming and moving tripods and cameras, maybe that doesn't happen as well. So this step is probably going to be a little easier for you. Oh, and a quick tip if it does harden up in the ramekin on you before it's all been spread out evenly. You can just zap that in the microwave for a few seconds until it liquefies again. And then you can just tilt the ramekin to coat. But anyway, once our lightly greased ramekins have caramel in the bottom, we will go ahead and transfer those into a baking dish and set them aside while we move on to make our custard. And because I was attempting a cheesecake flan, instead of using all milk, I went with some cream cheese and, in a little bit of a plot twist, some Parmesan. And my reason for adding the parm was because if you add enough cream cheese to make this taste like cheesecake, you will lose that gorgeous flan-like texture. So I thought by adding a small amount of a stronger flavored cheese, like the Parmesan, I'd be able to add that cheesy flavor without affecting the texture too much. And you know what? It kind of worked. But anyway, let's continue on with a little bit of real pure vanilla extract as well as a tiny pinch of salt, followed by three large beaten eggs. And then what we'll do is go ahead and mix this all together, which is very, very quick and easy to do, unless you try to use a spatula, in which case it's very difficult and will take you a long time. So right about here, I realized I'd made a terrible choice, and I switched to a whisk, which worked out significantly better. Okay, so please remember that. Never be afraid to change tools. And by the way, I'm not just talking about cooking. But anyway, the point is we'll use a whisk to mix this smooth. And once that's been accomplished, we can add the last ingredients, which will be some white sugar added to some whole milk that we will heat up until it's just about ready to simmer. And by the way, we don't need this to boil. We just want it very hot, which I guess you could do in the microwave. But generally, I'll just place it on medium heat until it starts getting steamy. And then once our milk and sugar mixture is nice and hot, we'll go ahead and quickly whisk that into our mixture. Just dump it all in and stir. Don't worry, it's not going to scramble the eggs. All right, people are way too worried about little bits of egg scrambling. And even if it did, you could strain this. So just try to relax. But anyway, once that's been mixed in, we can go ahead and ladle that into our ramekins. And we will do our best to put the same amount to each. And then before we pop this in the oven, what we'll want to do is add some hot tap water to our baking dish. Enough so that it comes about halfway up the sides. And that's it. Once our flan pan has been filled up about halfway with water, we will very carefully transfer that into the center of a 325 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour or until that custard is just set. And please be careful placing these in. As you'll see, I almost splashed it out, but I didn't. And like I said, we'll bake that until just barely set. And this is how you're gonna know. All right, you see how when we shake how wavy it looks in the center and it's still obviously liquid? That is not done yet. So I let those continue to bake until they were actually set which I'm just about to show you. Okay, so please know the time is just a guess, and you're gonna have to figure this out. Since you are, after all, the Shaka Khan of Shake and Flan, 
And you'll know yours is done when it looks like this. Right? When you give it a shake, it still wiggles and jiggles a little, but all is one mass. Okay, if the center is still kind of liquefied, put it back in. But if the whole thing jiggles as one piece, it's ready. And once we've determined that's cooked long enough, we can go ahead and remove that from the baking dish, which is extremely painful if you use your bare fingers. So maybe use the tongs instead. And then what we'll do is let these cool down to room temp before refrigerating them until chilled. Unless you want to eat them warm, which some people do. I don't. But suit yourself. And then while I was waiting for these to cool, because I was calling them cheesecake flans, I decided to combine some honey graham cracker crumbs with some melted butter, enough to make it look and feel like wet sand. And then I went ahead and spooned a little bit over the top and sort of spread it out and pressed it down. And my thinking was once that chilled, it would solidify. And then once I turned these out on a plate, I would end up with a little bit of a cheesecake-like crust. And I went ahead and did that to three of the four, leaving one without the crumbs, because I wanted a control subject to test the other ones against. And also Michelle said she didn't want crumbs on hers. And that's it, once those were cooled and crumbed, we will wrap those up and transfer them into the fridge until fully chilled. Which for me was only like two hours, because the sun was going down. And then once we're ready to serve, we'll go around with a thin knife to help loosen the edge of that flan from the ramekin. And that's it, we will carefully invert that on the plate. And if it doesn't slide right out, just give it the old shake a shake -a. But gently, not too much. And then once plated, we'll go ahead and drizzle any of that remaining sugar syrup over the top. And then in keeping with the cheesecake theme, I went ahead and garnished with some fresh raspberries. And as I did that, I could see all my beautiful caramel sauce on the plate being sucked into my graham cracker crumbs. So I was forced to dissolve a little more and add some for the pictures. Which I should probably take a minute and show you how to do just in case. Okay, this is what your ramekin's gonna look like even after a successful inversion. Okay, you're gonna be left with some caramel in the bottom that's too thick to pour. But what we can do is add a couple teaspoons of water and then pop this in the microwave for about 10 seconds or so. And we should be able to dissolve another couple teaspoons off the bottom. So keep that in mind if you want to add a little more. But anyway, I did add a little extra to mine and then went ahead and took some pictures. And then I finally grabbed a spoon to give this a try. And I already knew it was gonna come out breathtakingly beautiful since anything baked on top of caramel usually does. But I was very curious how close this was gonna to taste to a cheesecake, which is exactly what this would have tasted like. It had not tasted so much like a flan. And what I mean by that is while this did sort of have a cheesecake-like flavor profile, because of the distinctive taste that caramelized sugar provides, this still really did primarily taste like a flan. I mean, an incredibly, incredibly rich and delicious flan, but a flan nonetheless. And deep down, I knew that caramelized sugar was going to have that effect. But I guess I thought the graham cracker crumb crust was going to push it past that, but it didn't. I mean, I even tried cleansing my palate with a raspberry. And yet my conclusion was the same. In fact, the crumbs really did not add that much. And really what they mostly did was suck up all my beautiful sauce. So yet again, Michelle's instincts were right. But anyway, that's it. What I'm still stubbornly calling cheesecake flan. Whether you're looking for an absolutely gorgeous, relatively simple dessert to make for yourself, or possibly a romantic holiday like Valentine's Day is coming up, and you're trying to make something beautiful and delicious to increase your chances of getting lots of compliments, Either way, and no matter what you call it, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.